Okay, um, so uh, we see a people uh, have been dialing here from uh, across the Houston area, uh, New Orleans, Oklahoma City, which gives us a wide range. Somebody may be joining us as far as way from South Africa, because uh, I did some work there a few years ago and managed to connect up with somebody. Um, I, uh, I want to welcome everybody to our, our uh, webinar that I did. It's, it's a, an opportunity to stop and slow down and focus on the subject of uh, the sky is falling. Uh, now what? Now, when somebody said that the sky is falling, um, did we pick that because of Chicken Little, like there's false information out there? That's not the case at all. We're dealing with some dynamic times in the marketplace right now, more so than uh, uh, that we've seen in recent years. As a matter of fact, there's a number of people who are actually listening in and watching today that are doing so uh, and who've never experienced a downturn as, uh, uh, as severe as this happened where things just kind of went through, through a chaos. Uh, however, as I was thinking about this, I started kicking back to looking at uh, uh, what life was like after 9-11. After 9-11, we're, 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 my company was planning on taking a trip and taking a group of our top people actually to Europe. And as we're heading over, to, uh, actually making plans the next day to go to the, uh, to the airport, and uh, it's whenever the, uh, the Twin Towers were hit. And literally, air traffic stopped and business stopped. I, I remembered after Enron, collapsed. Here in Houston, Texas, those of us working in the local marketplace, uh, Enron was a blowing, thriving organization. And then literally it seemed like almost overnight, it fell, it, it just collapsed. And what happened was you had like 4,000 people were dumped in the Houston marketplace and companies, you know, literally started to, to, to cringe and, and stop trying. We, we saw our local marketplace uh, a cringe, especially because we fell into a, a global meltdown at that point in time, because you had Enron, uh, WorldCom, Tyco, and then the, the mortgage crisis all happened within a, a six to eight month period of time. And when we came out of that, and when we got into that, it's like we were sitting there going, my God, is the sky falling? What, what do we do? How do we cope with all these things? So that's why I wanted to, to spend a few minutes with us today looking at the subject and be able to look at, at, at what it's, what is it like to, uh, deal with this, what I call the swirl. You know, we're going to look at it. What do you need to be doing right now today to push through this information swirl that, that screams chaos? And then what do you need to be doing with clients and candidates? And what do they need from us, from you, us in the recruiting industry in particular to help them navigate this? And, and how do we, we manage what I call the, the cycle shutter? And I'm using this term it's, that I came up with, the cycle shutter, moving from a candidate-driven market to a client-driven market. And the reason why I say that is because of the fact that uh, we've been, we're moving out of, a, a, of an environment where there's been a huge, huge demand for talent in a very, very low supply marketplace. High demand, low supply, that's the space that we have been operating in, literally from around the country. You know, it's, I was uh, working with, with a group up in, in, in Colorado and the unemployment rate over there was hovering around two, uh, 2.2, 2.3. Uh, I was working with a company up in, in Milwaukee uh, with my friends who might be on the line right now with uh, the QPS organization. We look at it over in the Nebraska area and Iowa area. Some of the cities there, that their unemployment in an, ag an agrarian or agricultural environment had dipped all the way down to like 1.4. They couldn't even find people for, for, for day labor types of jobs were hard to recruit for. And so we've been operating in this high demand, low supply market that we're involved with. And so what I wanted to do is to spend some time today looking at, at not the state of the market as far as the, uh, the economics of what's going on. I want us to focus on the state of the recruiting market, look at it specifically in that area. I am not a financial advisor. I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not going to put a crystal ball in front of you and say, this is what we need to expect as, as we look forward. Uh, I'm going to give you those some things that we need to be doing right now in today's marketplace at this point in time. I was talking to a financial advisor, a friend of mine, Alejo Orvignanos, who works for Merrill Lynch Bank of America and deals with high net worth individuals. All, um, as a matter of fact, they, he, he has clients around, uh, in different parts of the globe. Uh, and he was explaining to me about market gyrations. And he, he, he taught me this term, and it, it's called capitulation. Capitulation. And know this, 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 but I'm not broadcasting from, uh, from London. That is not the Tower of Big Ben in the background. I just want to, want to share that with you. Uh, you focus on this word capitulation. He said, Mike, what capitulation is you have an event. 9-11 was an event. And we see that event in real time. 
Uh, you have Enron collapsing. You see that event and we experience that event in real time. Uh, we have the corona, you know, the COVID-19 coming in over the last couple, we, we, we see that it started at this point in time, started in China. We can see all the, the events on a real time basis. And what happens is when the turn takes place and things get better and we go into what is called recovery, when we recover from whatever that event, whatever that market turned down, when you get past the, uh, uh, the, the mortgage crisis, when you get past uh, the, the dip, right now we had a, a major event where the price of oil has, has just fallen off the table down to, to $29. We see that in real time basis. We also saw it fall in the 80s when it went from like 45, the same scenario, then went from $45 a barrel, which was the high at that point in time. It went from $45 a barrel and dropped to $9 a barrel all within a few months period of time. But we also saw when the recovery happened, we saw whenever it made the turning came back up again, when the mortgage industry got back up on its feet, when we got past 9-11, and we were able to see that, that thing. The problem that we have though, is that when we are in, in, in this cycle, where things are, are, are moving down, um, we, we don't see, we, we, we can't see things as, as clearly. We, we're trying to, to find the specifics of, uh, of what's happening in the marketplace. And what happens is when we're in this downward cycle, uh, what our vision has a tendency to do, is it has a tendency whenever we, we get to this, this space of that's where we are, things are cascading down. We have a tendency to then turn and, and look at, at, at things from like, but it used to be like this. It was over here. Uh, here's the, the big problem we run to. This is what's causing. That's the blame over here. The finger goes in that direction. And then our eyes focus in the other direction, which is, well, when's the turn going to take place? When's it, when, what's going to happen? When is it going to get better? We're doing that right now. We're, we're doing, going to this place of where, where people are going into a position where, 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 where today where the new norm is forced migration to, to, to remote work. It's not even volunteer. I was talking to a consultant that I partner up with. I'm an authorized partner with the Jill Hickman's companies. And we're talking to, to one of her, her national clients. Uh, and they're talking about that, that, that 90% of their workforce has now been moved to, uh, to remote work. Uh, I do work with JP Morgan Chase. They moved a large part of their, their, their infrastructure to a remote place, to, to, to a remote home. And in doing so, what's happened is, you know, there's also right now the new norm is there's, there's an increased anxiety. That's, that's what we're wrestling with. It, it, that's, that's, that's where we are right now. And what people are trying to do is figure out, when is that gonna change? When is it going to get better? What's gonna happen from the, uh, from, from the turn? And that's the new norm is, 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 what are we doing today? Not what it used to be like, not what it's gonna be in the future, but today, what is the norm? And how do we operate in today's time with today's situation? Now, the reason why this is important for us to look at is that a friend of mine was working for Amico, um, uh, which became rolled up into the BP organization. He was working in Russia, helping to manage the, the oil fields, and he's traveling between Moscow to Siberia. And he was there whenever the, when, uh, for those of you who were, uh, are old enough to remember the Soviet Union collapsed and broke apart into all these different states. Literally, contracts were canceled overnight. And what he was explaining to me is that we had to make decisions when I was there based upon a 25 hour, a 24 hour life cycle. So in other words, we look at things, what are things today? And I would make my decisions. This is how I operate my business today, knowing that circumstances might change tomorrow. And then I'll come back and address it. But if we don't deal with what are we doing today, we sit and we freeze and we don't take steps forward. We don't push out. And what happens is that literally our processes and systems stop operating effectively. And more importantly, we get pushed to the side and run over. So I think we have to look at what is, today's, what is today's norm when we're looking at this? Where are we in this cycle? Because there's actually, we're finding two viruses right now, friends. You know, the first one is uh, COVID-19. We know that. The second virus we're fighting is fear. Fear. What's taking place right now is that there's fear of this state of uncertainty that we're in that, that, that is really causing uh, people to, uh, to, to really... And see, anxiety levels climb. This fear is coming up of going, well, what's going to happen down the road or whatever? Which the fear is caused by, by, this, by, by what if? What if? Now, here's the first lesson that I really want you to write down. What we have to do is we have to avoid this term that's called linear thinking. Linear thinking. Uh, 
I was reading a thing about an investment analyst was, was, was pointed out that I saw this two years ago and it was an opposite situation that because of where we are right now, this is what the future will be like. And you can't make investments decisions based upon uh, like they're saying things will always stay the same. We're seeing it right now. Things are not the same today than they were, you know, four months ago. And when we made decisions four months ago, based upon the fact that it would always be like that, wrong decision-making process. And, but the same thing is true today. We can't make decisions today saying that this is how this market chaos stuff, you know, is, this, is, is, is gonna be the same, because you know, it's not. There is a turn where things will, 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 will move forward. It always does, because what happens is, you know, we have been in a low supply, high demand, low supply marketplace. Here's what we're moving toward. We're moving toward a lower demand and a medium supply marketplace. It's a lower demand and a medium supply marketplace. Now, what is not happening, it, there's, we're not moving into a no demand, no supply marketplace. That, that's not what's dealing, what we're dealing with. There is still demand in the marketplace today for talent. In spite of all the stuff that's going on, in spite of what we might think uh, and hear from the, the news media, uh, it's, it might, that we might project. There are companies that are retrenching and pulling back. That is true. The price of oil has caused, caused companies to go back and really readjust and really look at things. But there's also some long-term contracts that are out there that are much longer than a month, six months, one year, two years, three. There's long-term contracts that, that cause demand in the marketplace for exceptional talent. And those contracts are not being wiped out by the COVID virus. It's not taking place. So what we're, what we're working with on this is, is it's important right now that what we have to do is we have, it's, it's critical that, um, that we understand that today's marketplace, there's demand for, for, for top tier talent. I, I was talking to someone in, in preparation for the, our, our conversation today. Uh, because I, I what's going on in your office. And I love the story that he said is he had placed somebody in a company about, I think he said is either two or three years ago. And when he put him to work, uh, the guy with the guy was an A player. He was a superstar. This guy was somebody who made a difference in the company. But what happened was because of the company constricting, uh, they took his division and decided to take his division and just squeeze it down. And basically his job was on me. He got laid off. He was, he was a performer. But the company moved forward in and, 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 and a pretty aggressive way. And what happened was this guy contacted the recruiting firm who had placed him a couple of years ago. They took his background and they went out and talked to something, six different companies, arranged three interviews and placed him within five days for a $72,000 search fee. There's demand in the marketplace, even in spite of everything that you see on the media and everything that's taking place, there's demand in the marketplace for talent. Our challenge is that we need to make sure we're reaching out into that market, reaching out to, 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 to our, our candidates and our clients for very specific reasons. In this type of a marketplace, when things start getting somewhat chaotic, candidates start reevaluating their situation. Candidates reevaluate their situation. Uh, people that you were trying to get on the phone three, four, five, six months ago, right? You'll be able to get them and get, get and have a better chance of engaging them in conversation eh? because you see this, there's reevaluation taking place. There was a young man that I'd spoken to who had, uh, was working in the in, um, construction, uh, the engineering construction industry. He left a position with one of the, the top companies to move because his mentor left to another role. And when the mentor left another role, a couple of months later, they reached back. He reached back and said, why don't you join me? And he made the decision after only being with the firm right out of college, about eight months, uh, having started with this firm for, for eight months, uh, he made the decision to go to work and transfer over to the other company. Well, now what's happened is this new company, he's only been there for a matter of weeks. They're going and looking at some of the government contracts that are taking place or things that are happening. And there's rumors, not fact, just rumors going on, the contracts uh, might be going away and they may be going through layoffs. And he was last in, which makes him worried that he might be first out. He is reevaluating his situation and circumstance. Did I make the right moves? Do I need to find something else? This is what's taking place in the marketplace. Companies are reevaluating. 
they're reevaluating re not just their own financial situation, they're reevaluating the talent that they've got. I talked to, to, to one firm uh, a few uh, months ago, and uh, excuse me, a few weeks ago as we're going this, they were looking at their staff as they started seeing things coming down the road, trying to make a decision on going, going uh, who, are the, who, who, who are the players that, that, that are going to help us get through this period of time? Who are the players that are going to help us get through this time? What are the needs that we're going to have depending upon the contracts that, that we're working with? And so companies, leaders are going back in and they're reevaluating the team that they've got. They're reevaluating their systems and their processes and the effectiveness they have. Do they have the right employees to be able to put those processes and systems in place? And so this is a time that we need to be in the market talking to people more so than what we've ever had before. That's what you do whenever the market starts turning down. You get involved in more conversations, but because here's the question we have to ask ourselves. What is it they need for us today? What do they need from us? As I started thinking about this, I started looking at what, you know, what they need from us more than anything else is this. They need for us to be gladiators, gladiators. And I did some research. I picked this picture specifically because I found out in my research in the 500s, there were actually women gladiators that fought uh, in the arenas. There were women gladiators. And so it, it's, they, it, if you look at what a gladiator, these were, these were, these were warriors. These were people that, that stepped into battle. These are people that, that fought. And, and I started thinking, who, what do our, my, our, our current day warriors look like? This is who they are. These are men and women who go into very uncomfortable situations. Um, and as they take on a battle, here's what they do. I, I, I love reading about the Navy SEALs. Those of you who are on the phone, my friends who are on the phone who know me, know I am not a Navy SEAL. This physique doesn't go in that direction. But I read a lot about the mindset they've got because that's the battleground that we play in. We don't have to go off into a physical war, but right now at your desk, you're fighting a mental war. You're fighting a mental battle. And the mental battle the Navy Seals fight, the SEALs fight when they get in adverse circumstances is that they always have this situation where they go into mission, there's a forward thinking focus. So if you stop and you think about what the forward thinking focus that we need to have right now, and you, you, you narrow it down today, is it's not worrying about when is the when the thing is going to get better, but right now, what do I need to today in the next 24 hours to move things forward? How do I reach out to more people? How do I connect with more people? How do I get my voice into the marketplace more? And that's the forward thinking focus that, that in this type of a cycle that you have to have. Because you have to be able to measure, measure what you're doing in looking at output versus outcome. Output versus outcome. Uh, uh, I, I actually got this term was given to me um, back during one of our other down cycles back in the, the mid to mid 2000s, uh, 2008. Uh, and some of, uh, of the people on the phone with the Richard Roy and the Roberts organization, they actually know him, especially of those of us in Houston. Managing partner uh, RWR is, is Truett Allen. And I ran into Truett at, at an awards program that our, our, our state association had. And uh, Truett, year after year, was one of, one of the top people that was always ranked way, way up in the, uh, uh, the, when the awards were given out. And uh, I saw Truett, and his, his face was, was, was kind of, had, it was a little, little, little shallow, a little white. And I said, what's going on? This was the end of March. I, 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 he said, I, uh, I, I'm at $17,000 for the year. Now, Truett was somebody that at that time was billing out in direct hire fees, uh, seven, eight hundred thousand plus and uh so if you can do the math seventeen thousand is a little bit off base and and and, and i said what are you going to do about it he said i'm, I'm going to measure my output not my outcome i'm not looking at the placements i'm making i backed it out i'm looking at what's my daily output what's my daily output that i have to do as far as the number of people i speak to the resumes that i get in the candidate smittles that i that, that i produce uh, the, the, the searches that I pick. I'm looking, looking at my daily output. And I'm going to push hard on that. I'm going to raise those numbers up. And with the clients that I was working with that were billing, uh, who are not billing now, whenever they come back, I'll have picked up new clients. I'll have new candidates. And my, uh, my uh, uh, production will increase. Well, uh, it's exactly what happened. I ran into them the next year. And I found out that uh, between that time and the end of the year, he billed out over another $700,000 by focusing on, on, on just on daily output. And I think that's the stage that we're at right now. In this marketplace, what you have to do at your desk, 
Because what's happening is a lot of, you, I would almost go and say that everybody on this call is now not in your physical office. I believe that uh, based upon research, I think 90% of the people on this call are actually sitting in their home office right now by yourself. And so what happens is you have to look at, at what are your key performance indicators that are gonna drive your business up. Now, when I say your key performance indicators, what's critical that you look at is that not your bosses, not what's been put on, on, on your shoulders by your company, but what are yours? What are you gonna set as your KPIs to be able to, to, be able to drive, uh, drive, to drive more, to more business? And in today's marketplace, because of, of, uh, of what we're dealing with, I've talked to people said it's, 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 it's because of everybody working from home, it's made it more difficult for us to connect with. Them. And I started thinking about that. Um, is, is it that they're more difficult to reach out to or has our, has, has our, has our reach out scaled back because of all the confusion in the market? Are we running more phone calls and more attempts to reach people by either leaving voicemails, by increasing the number of emails that we're sending out, our LinkedIn messages, the number of voicemails. These are things in today's time that we have to, we have to increase our reach out to connect with people. Because what we're finding in talking with people who are uh, in, in, in doing research of what are they experiencing right now, in a lot of cases, it's almost easier for people to respond back, right? Because what they're saying is I can now get the attention of people that I couldn't get the attention 60 days ago. That people, because of this, that, that they are back, they're working from home, uh, they don't have all of the distractions and stuff from the house. They've got the distractions, dogs, cats, or big bin in the background. But there's something that's taking place right now where people are, are because of the reflection, and there's a desire to connect. So if, if, if we can reach out to people, Right? And, and, and do so, I'm gonna back up here. If we can reach out that in, in our emails, our LinkedIn, our voicemail messages, and we're, link, and we're reaching out to them, not in, in, a, in a mass situation, but very targeted, and making sure we're trying to uh, approach them specifically by connecting with them who they are and making sure there are messages uh, that, that indicate that. Uh, and then raising the level of performance, because what has to happen is that the, the, our outcome it would help if I go in the other direction, all right? What happens is um, we're, we're going to get objections in the marketplace right now. You're gonna get objections that are gonna come at you. We need to anticipate people saying, uh, I'm staying put. We need to anticipate people uh, uh, not moving forward. We have to anticipate what, what companies might say, and we have to uh, look at what the objections that we're, gonna, that, that we're being uh, given, and then, spend time practicing and sharpening our saw in this stage at this time to be able to drive our business forward better. This is a time where we need to get better at our job. We can't just keep doing what we've done before because again, there's a new norm. So what are you doing right now to sharpen the approach that you're taking with the clients that you're reaching? What are you sharpening with the candidates? What are you doing with the, 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 uh, emails that you're, you're driving to make sure that the language that you, you're using is going to be something that's going to capture attention and be specific for that individual. And they can see this is why this person is reaching out to me. Right? And, then, and then you've got opportunities to, to connect with other people in your offices or other people you might know to, to practice and sharpen your saw. I will tell you that in this type of market, I want to prepare you for something that, that we, uh, it's already starting to raise its head. Right? And that's people uh, because of cost containment on the guise of constant containment, you're going to see uh, price pressure as far as what, what we're charging. Companies are, 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 will, will, some companies will try to push back on that, and they're going to do it under the guise of cost control. Well, the, the challenge that we have is in this time, in this marketplace, I believe that the value of who we are and what we do has now increased, not decreased. We're not dealing with the high demand candidates, the candidates that are that that are that have the um, the most ability to have impact. Uh, there's there's actually not a shortage of those. As a matter of fact, I was talking to somebody the other day. It said that what happens is companies uh, are having trouble getting uh, people to respond to them because of the fact of people are kind of now going to a stalling spot, and so that our value being uh, increases 
and our ability to talk to candidates and encourage them to go ahead and look. It's, it's time to be able to, to, to make a move. You, it, it, here's the circumstance that we're dealing with. Here's the opportunity you have in front of you. You have the ability to get their attention for clients at a, at a much higher rate of speed. Our value has increased in our ability to find the people who really can make a difference and really have an impact. If you look at the market what we're dealing with right now, yes, the only gas marketplace in, in Texas is, is, is going through a, a, a constriction. But in the middle of that constriction, like I said, there are, there are contracts that have a longer window to them. There are still con companies in that area that for, for certain roles that they're going to need people, especially that when um, one, one of the, the areas that we're going to be able to step into is whenever turnover takes place, where somebody does make a decision to leave. And uh, companies are going to need to be able to bring somebody on board and be able to deal with turnover circumstances. You're going to find that companies, in order to deal with this, they're, they're, they're going to look for ways to be able to increase their business. And so if you have somebody who's capable of coming in and reorganizing, somebody who's capable of coming in and helping to control costs, somebody who's capable of coming in and helping to bring in additional business. Anything along those lines is where value increases. And in today's marketplace, we have to, it's critical, it's critical that we assess our, our, our sales ability, our sales skills to look at, are, are we listening more than pitching? We need to be able to, we need to, 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 to put ourselves in a situation whenever we are uh, listening to what's going on more than responding circumstances. We have to do better at asking questions and getting people to talk to us about, about what are they dealing with emotionally? S to ask questions specifically about what's going on, what's happening with them, what's happening with their family. Because here's what happens. When we check into that space and we move away from the transaction of, make, of, 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 of filling a job, that's how a person, that's where both a client or a candidate gets, get, feels a sense of connection to us. It's to step, in, step into them and find it. I got, a, I got an email um, two days ago, all the way from Sri Lanka, from somebody that uh, was just checking on me. Somebody actually had, had done some business with in the past, and he was just, I'd actually hired him to do some work for him. And he was checking all the way from Sri Lanka. How are you doing? I'm telling you, when he did that, there was an emotional connection there's just a spark that took place. And so I, it, it's it, for us to reach out and, and find out what's going on. So look at your candidate list, look at your contact list, the people that, that you have not been in contact with in the last six months that you need to reach out to at this point in time, in this situation, this circumstance. It's, it's gonna increase your connect rate, all right? And, but it also is that we wanna check and find out what's going on, what's the business impact of what they're dealing with in their company. What's the business impact that the current client is having on the, on the, on the, the candidate you're trying to talk to and their role? What's, the, what's happening that is impacting the businesses that you're serving as far as what's taking place and finding out why they're, going, they're dealing with what they have, uh, with what they're, what they're wrestling with, uh, with the circumstance. When they look down the road to ask the question again emotionally from a business standpoint with today's climate, what is it that you're most worried about that, will, that might take place in the next 90 to 120 days. What are you worried about? And getting them to talk to you and ask the question, why does that cause weight? Step into that and probe down what I call like peeling the onion, probe down to a deep, deeper level. See, what's happened is, is that we do have a, a, a new norm. And the new normal we're wrestling with right now is average and normal is not gonna create enough energy for you to be able to, to, to make this turn in, uh, uh, that, that, that is eventually going to come. It's also again, not going to create enough energy for you to be able to, uh, uh, to, to push through, to, through the difficult times we have. We have to raise things up at, at a higher level. And in today's time, one of the, the things that, that is to look at the network that you've already built right now, and you got to look at expanding your network. Today, today is the best opportunity you can to expand the network at both on the client as well as candidate side. You know, you, you, because you, you, want to, you want to look for, for people that you can reach out and you can be in, in contact with. Uh, and, it, it, and one of the, the, the key ways to do it, one of the easy ways for us to do it, that we have a tendency not to do when we're working in, a, in, in, in a, the type of market that we were wrestling with, is that is increasing your referral base. Now, what I mean by that is that as you're talking to somebody, right, today's the day for you to be able to ask questions about, who is it that you need to reach out to, to, to just increase your connection with? Who is it that you need to know? 
you need to have a, 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 a referral uh, part of your process with each and every person that you talk to. And because that's one of the best ways to expand your network. I think that from a research standpoint, you have an opportunity right now to carve out a portion of your day, not all day. This is not the time for you to get off the phones or to, to stop doing emails, but to put a, a portion of your day in to increase the research and the planning that you do and to look at, at from a contact standpoint, uh, who is it that, that you need to be putting in part of either your recruiting plan or your business plan? Which companies do you need to go and check into? When you're looking at referrals, you need to be talking to people to find out who do they know, who do they really respect in the marketplace that they think may me, uh, be able to, uh, 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 in the energy place, be able to uh, uh, expand or, or be able to continue to move forward. Uh, in today's time is to ask um, for advice or opinion on what people think of that, that companies that will uh, not be as affected by the, the, the COVID-19. Uh, when you stop and you think about it, we know that whenever this, this travel stuff starts shortening down, that when things start expanding about, we know that with the demands in the marketplace, and they're already starting right now, are for food distribution companies. Um, we know that the healthcare marketplace is not from a practitioner standpoint, but just in the field, but your back office all the way across the board, we know that there's going to be an, an increase in demands because of the fact that services in that area are growing. You need to be thinking in terms of from a market standpoint is who will, who, who will be moving forward? Because again, this is not a no demand, no supply marketplace. There's things that move and, and if we increase the people we come into contact with, and as you reach somebody, here's one of the things, again, from a technique standpoint that's critical that you do, is that is acknowledge the obvious. You know, when you're approaching somebody, I know that times are crazy right now. That's exactly why I'm reaching out. And the reason why this is important, because that's the thought they've got in their head. Whatever the obvious is, right, you put that on the table and it opens the door uh, for them to kind of, uh, to, 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 for them to be more respect, re receptive to your, to your approach. Uh, now, here's the other thing you have to look at. It, 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 I put this in red for you because you want to use technology to make a noise. That's my new phrase. Every day, I'm trying to do things to make a noise. Uh, you need to be making a noise in the marketplace. You need to be making a noise of that, that, that not that you're still in business. That's not the noise I'm talking about. The, the noise that you're really good at what you do and that as things either subside or especially over the course of the next weeks or months, as we move through this channel, right, you're making a noise or you're connecting with individuals that, uh, uh, so that they have an understanding of who you are, what your capabilities are, that you have a connection and that you, have a, that, that you know what's taking place. You understand the marketplace. Uh, and so you want to make a noise both to in the, the, the market and the individuals that you talk to. I want to talk about the individuals because that's a key aspect. We think of making a noise about doing things along the lines of, of writing things like, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to uh, I, I, need, I need to come up with a quote. Uh, I need to write a blog. Uh, I need to write articles. You know, there's a big thing right now that podcasts are big. This is, webinar today is a perfect example. Let me, let me kind of explain something to you. Uh, yes, these are great things if, if this is in your real house to do these things. But here's my suggestion to you. If you want to talk about making a noise, I think you need to go in and write down the, the, your 10 favorite quotes that pump energy and uh, uh, that, that, that are positive, that are optimistic. You know, and, and when you send an email out, always have a quote that goes with the email. More importantly, you can send an email out to a candidate and say, was thinking about you, thought I'd share this with you. Not sure what's going on with that, would love to talk to you. You can use that quote to create an, emotion, an emotional reaction. From a blog standpoint, is there, is there a blog somewhere that you've read? Is there an article that you've read? Is there a podcast that you either listen to or you can do some research and go and find podcasts that you can uh, then send a link to somebody on an individual basis uh, to let them know that, that, uh, that, that you were thinking about them and that you're sharing positive information with them? Give me an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, this is one that I wrote uh, on how do you deal with turmoil today? And what I do now is I'm reaching out to at least 10 people a day and I'm, I'm sending this article out. Uh, this, 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 it's, a small, uh, it's just a small blog that I wrote. Uh, now, here's my suggestion to you. And it's, I'm not saying this from a self-serving standpoint. You go to my website and find this. You can take this thing and you can go in and you can send it out. 
you can email it out or go find another one. Find somebody who's posted something that you like that really spoke to you uh, and, and share that information with, 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 your, with your community, uh, with the people that you're coming into contact with. It's a reason for reaching back out to contact people. Just leaving messages you know, is, is not enough. We need to be doing what I call Oreo. You need to leave a message. You need to send them an email. Uh, you need to maybe leave them another message. You need to send them uh, pieces of information. Here's information. Here's information. Here's information. Three weekends ago, I spent a, 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 a couple of days with uh, some national leaders from around the country We're here in Houston. One of the, the, the top marketing people that uh, got up and talked about the importance of being able to, with all of our marketing outreach, 70% of the time, I need to be sharing information out to the market. I need to be sharing information. And then 30% of the time, then I get to ask. But if you're approaching your candidates and approaching your clients, what information are you putting out that this is the time in the marketplace that you get an opportunity to get your voice out and you've got to raise things up because what's happening is, is this whole thing with news. Um, you know, I, the other day I, I, I got up and I got my, uh, uh, my iPhone and I pulled up and I started scrolling just to see what the feeds were. And 99% of the information that I scrolled through had to do with the COVID-19 virus, 99% of it. And then what I found out when I started looking at it is that the, the problem was, it wasn't new news. It was information that was in there was opinion about the news. And so what's happening is that in today's marketplace, they, what they were doing most of the stuff that they were projecting, they were talking about, uh, that we will have a million people in the hospitals uh, dying from the COVID virus. Well, again, linear. Um, I'm not saying that that's not going to happen. I don't. But it's like it's it's only an opinion. It's not fact. It's not news. You know, we've got some battles to work with in that area. But it, it, what happens is we have to watch: is how much are we reading that's based upon opinions and not based upon what's the facts today. What are we dealing with today? What's the situation? I don't mean we need to stick our head in the sand, but we want to be looking at what are we dealing with and, and look at on a real-time basis, not projected. Because your clients and candidates are in the same situation where th this, this space that we're in causes them sometimes to get in a state of constriction, stop. So as you're talking to your candidates, what happens is you want to be able to encourage them to, to take steps. You know, in our place, but the steps is for them to, to continue to meet with each other. You know, how do you, how do you move an interview forward in spite of the fact that we can't go into offices? Well, you know, personally, just like today, we've got technology that helps out a lot. You know, we've got Skype and we've got Zoom. We have meetings where people can still connect. And so we want to be, be, be recognized that interviews are still taking place. And you know, some are being postponed because they're trying to organize some things. But some are. And the question is, what are you doing to encourage those meetings to take place? What are you doing to reach out to the community that you're serving to let your clients know that you have been able to find some exceptional, not average, exceptional talent for them? You know, and to be able to get more, more information with, with, um, from them, uh, to them about the type of talent you're dealing with. And I think more than anything else in today's marketplace, while we're wrestling with this stuff, um, is it's critical that we, we don't make up the story. We don't make up the story. And what, what I mean by that is that, um, you know, that the, the, the client isn't calling me back because. The client isn't calling me back because. The candidate won't respond. The candidate might not. This might not take place. It's, we can't make up the story. We have to be putting a, uh, enough energy out into the marketplace. We need to be put, creating enough energy in ourselves to be able to move through difficult situations and circumstances, right? And, and the way you do that though, there's an energy drain that when you start living out of what might happen as opposed to what is, it slows you down and stops you from stepping up and stepping forward. Right? And so what happens is you have to be, be, just be aware of the what ifs. You know, if something's going on and you're spending time thinking about, well, what if, that those words, what if, should be a trigger in your mind that this is not the conversation I should be taking place. I don't mean sticking your head in the stand like it's not, like an ostrich, but being worried about what if the circumstances are, you got to be looking at, at what outreach are you doing right now to the candidates you're, that, that you're trying to, to, to connect up with? What can you do to step out and help with people?
And I think in this type of market, more, more than when, when you have things that, that, that are, are going through a constriction, is it's critical that we get to a stage where we, we, we have to look at the, the, the jobs we're working with and we got to kill the dead horses. We, we got to get rid of the, the, the positions that we're working on that, um, that are time wasters because the clients, you know, uh, are unrealistic in their expectations. Uh, the, the, you know, if you look at the, the, the jobs you have, I'd recommend going and, and tearing them out and looking at the, uh, at which are the ones that you need to get off of your board that you have there just in case you find somebody. In today's marketplace, it's not just in case you find, you've got to be taking your energy, focusing as much as you can on the positions that you can fill and putting a game plan in place. So you, you got to get rid of the dead horses. Um, so what happens is in today's time, all this is designed for you to be able to come up and look at, at creating your own internal energy. Uh, that's what's important, especially because we're not going into an office for the most part and having the energy of the office being able to help us move forward. We've got to do things to create our, our own internal energy. So what I'm going to suggest that you do is that in, in this culture with you working out of house, you're going to have to do some, some self-management some self-management. What I mean by that is that you're going to have to look at these four tiers that you're constantly filling yourself up with. Uh, you know, the physical part of it in today's time right now is that it's really important. I think that uh, you need to be looking at what are you doing physically to get up out of your desk at a certain periods of time and to uh, take somewhat of a break. Get up out of your desk and give yourself somewhat of a break. Because what happens is we sit and just kind of stew, but the same time is that what are you doing emotionally to replenish yourself? And the emotional replenishment can be, what are you reading? What are you doing to put inside of yourself? Mentally, how, what are you doing to grow at this point in time? What are you using to, to, to grow? And then spiritual for me could be some, uh, uh, either a, 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 a religious connection. It'd be connection with something that's a, a bigger, bigger, bigger than you are. Uh, it's where are you in your spiritual walk? You're looking at what are you doing with those four things to continue to fill you up? I think that right now, there's never been a, a greater need for us in our business. I really, I really, I, I don't. And the reason why I say that is because uh, what, what the, the marketplace needs from right now is a positive light. Not an overly sugary, optimistic light, but a, but a, but a positive light. And what I mean by that is that, that you need to be a voice out there that, that shows a voice of hope, a voice of potential. That, 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 that not getting caught up in, in the naysayer part of it, but like we will get through this. We're moving forward and that, that, that there are companies that you represent and that you will represent that are going to have need. That there's candidates that you're able to find that are going to be able to address these needs that clients are going to have. But it's like in today's time, you got to raise the bar on what you're trying to do, for, to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay? So, yeah, you know, we, we've got some constriction. We're in this thing right now trying to figure things out. Uh, but at the same time, I'm, it, it, in the midst of all this, uh, you, you look at where you are. What we're trying to do is we're trying to look at killing the swirl that screams chaos. And the way we do that is through outreach and connection. Our clients and our candidates need to hear from us now more than ever. So yeah, you're gonna have to raise the bar that you, on, on the, your attempt to do this whenever sometimes it feels like that's not what you wanna do. You gotta raise the bar. That you have to look at that, that they, they need our help to navigate through this process. Uh, and the, the, what I call the cycle shutter is because right now is that uh, there's a lot of industries that are shuttering, that they're kind of not stalling, but they're trying to figure out what to do over the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months. But then once we get that past that, they will be moving forward and chunking. You know, again, I'm not a, 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 a prognosticator. You know, I think that the oil industry has got a little bit of a longer cycle coming up, but it also is in a shutter mode because it will move forward. And the middle of all this movement, the middle of, middle of all this chaos, that's where the demand for our business climbs. It climbs to a higher level. So uh, I, I look at this, I think that, uh, you know, based upon what we've talked about here, we, we, I just want to spend some time looking at the, 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 the skies falling. Uh, and I, but I picked this picture. It is a dark, there's clouds all over there, but you see where those light beams are coming down? Well, those light beams are coming down. Those are the key aspects of what we're looking at here because that's who we are. 
in the middle of all this stuff, are you the light beam coming down? Where's your dot right now? Where's your dot today? What are you doing today to increase your ability to outreach to people? You know, do you have something on the wall? Do you have something in front of you to look at that you have uh, something specifically, uh, the positions you're work, working with? So these are the jobs I'm trying to fill. Do you have a list of your three or four top uh, candidates, your A player candidates? You know, and if your list is not three or four, then what are you doing today to go and see, can you find somebody? Because I'm telling you, if we reach out, there's more time, there are more people are willing, to, are, they're willing to talk today than what we've seen before. So, uh, in, in closing on this, what I want to do is I want to uh, let you know what's coming up. I'm actually doing another one of these on Friday of this week. And on Friday, we're going to be looking at what are tips uh, of how do you drive your business now that you're working from home? And I just wanted to show, I'll share some things that, that I, I've picked up from talking to other people who have been working from home for a while, things that I've experienced from when I worked uh, before earlier in my career and it was not successful versus what I'm doing now. Uh, and so uh, be, I will be seeing emails out to everybody who's on, who's on our call today as well as be posting that off the, on the internet. Uh, second of all over here is that in April, you'll also be seeing some emails as well as uh, 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 I'll be uh, posting things out on my website is I'm gonna be doing three uh, training classes. Uh, specifically, I picked these topics which are power presentations of presenting candidates in the marketplace to get to get companies to move on the talent that you're finding. We're gonna look at tech tools uh, to, to, to drive business along both search engines and more importantly about using Facebook and LinkedIn, different things in, in, our, in our emails and, and uh, uh, text messages. Uh, how do we use those things to drive business forward? We're also gonna be looking at the, the seven steps to, uh, to, to, to recruit in the midst of chaos. That's actually gonna be the very first one that we're gonna do. So uh, those will be coming up in, in, uh, in, in April, so be on the look for that. If, 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 if there's any leaders on the, on the call and you need help with virtual meetings, uh, I've got technical resources in the form of uh, Zoom capabilities to be able to help people uh, facilitate discussions and stay connected with people. And I also can help do some training in that area if, uh, if, if you need some support uh, to be able to run better meetings and be, keep your uh, design processes to keep people connected. And then also I uh, uh, would love to connect up with you if we aren't connected already on LinkedIn. Uh, please look for me. Uh, I do coaching, uh, individual coaching. If anybody has uh, some any issues or situations that, uh, that that you're working with, would be uh, would love the opportunity to talk to you about that. The um, my, my closing thought is this: uh, the key thing that we've got to look at is what our business is about. You know, there's a word that right now that, that's always been the heart of what I think the recruiting industry is, and right now it's more important than ever. And the word is hope. See guys, you are hope merchants. You really are. That's what you do when you go and find talent, find talent, you find capabilities, you're hope merchants. And I, 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 I want to pull this slide back up for you because you're warriors. You know, you really are in this type of business. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, the ones that are going to, that are, will thrive in this will take on this type of mindset. It's a warrior mentality and it, it, it's critical. Uh, uh, Final story for you is my, uh, my stepdaughter, Erica, is uh, a missionary in, in Cambodia. And she was here uh, in the United States visiting her, 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 her grandmother had, had passed away up in Chicago. And she flew back from Cambodia to be there for, uh, as her grandmother passed away and be there for the funeral. Well, Cambodia made the decision a few days ago that, uh, that they closed the borders to five, uh, five countries. The United States was one of them. And Erica had 72 hours to get back to Cambodia before they were going to close the borders for what they didn't know how long. And so what she, uh, she called us from Chicago and she goes, I, I can't, I can't come to Houston to visit y'all. I need to get on a plane because I've got to go back there. And of course we wanted her to be here. We thought this would be a much safer place than Cambodia. would be. Well, um, at the, uh, she thought about overnight call the next morning. She goes, no, I've got a ticket. I'm heading back. And she contacted us whenever she got back and she sent us a, a, through a through Viber through her, uh, a message that I made it back home. And because what I'm supposed to be here is to help people uh, sort of stay calm because they're a little bit rattled. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, I was made for a time like this. And here's my belief is I believe our industry is made for a time like this. I believe you are made for a time like this. 
what we got to do is we got to raise the bar on what we expect of ourselves in spite of all the chaos. What can we do to be reaching out? What can we do to be connecting with people? So uh, I'm going to stay on for a while. I'm actually going to unmute things here in a second in case anybody has wants to stay on the call with me. Uh, and uh, thanks for joining in. Thank you, Mike. A big old ant over there, guys. Over there.